Uh, this is Denise from Four Square Market Farm. I'd like to say I'm out here enjoying the snow, but that would be a lie. I'm not enjoying the snow, but the dogs have to come outside. And so here we are. They seem to be enjoying it. And uh, there's a little bit of my frozen collard greens and arugula is still left in the garden. Hi, this is Denise from Four Square Market Farm. Welcome to Studio Vlog. I recorded this studio vlog piece yesterday. I was outside with the snow falling uh, and Pepper and Joel were playing and if you like snow then it was it was beautiful. If you're like me and you're not really interested in snow then you're like uh, this is a mess. But I kind of went on about the whole Facebook, Instagram changes and how I thought it might affect my channel. And uh, after I got finished with it, it kind of felt like a rant and I uh, didn't really want to post it. So this is like take two and a half of the studio vlog. All right, here's my current projects and there's quite a bit of them because this is the start of the holiday season for me, depending on what you call holiday seasons. There are people who kind of get upset with you if you jump straight over top of Thanksgiving and work with Christmas. But because um, Christmas is basically the main event for my church and I'm making things for 100 plus people, I have to start fairly early. So I had to start thinking about dyes. Well, I really started thinking about dyes and cards in like July, but really getting the materials and putting things together at least by mid-October. And that's just for the church activities. Um, it's kind of a totally different thing when I'm dealing with uh, family members and friends because I have to have something that's different for them and I don't want to make a bunch of the same thing you know 150 something for the church and then kind of go around and send out the same cards to my friends and family so uh, you know you're dealing with a couple different versions here and I'll show you what I'm up to I'm in a kitchen and the lighting here is so much better than upstairs in the actual studio so I might just have to start filming part of, of the projects here. Okay, this first one right here is the card for the Neighborhood Evangelical Team. And uh, I, when you're making 100 plus cards, you, know, you try to make them as simple as possible because I am cutting up all the papers. I'm running them through the um, embossing machine, dry embossing. So this is a dry embossing. Oh, got that upside down. This is a dry embossing folder from Duris. And I don't actually know if the musical notes play anything. Um, I haven't taken the time to play them. Maybe I'll give it a try and see if it's actually a particular tune. Knowing uh, Duris, it probably is a tuner. Okay, so anyway, I had to do a hundred of these and then slice up a uh, hundred of these A2 size cards. And then, Use the circle dies to die cut 100 circle dies, stamp them 100 times with the joy uh, to the world lyrics and the word joy. And I was going to emboss it, but after you slice up 100 of something, you're kind of like, mm, this is okay. And this is the sounding joy stamping up set. It's maybe five, six, maybe even seven years old. Uh, and I just love the fact that it actually is joy to the world is two verses of joy to the world and inside are the sentiments that go in that step that set let every single verse king and then rejoice with you, rejoice with you in the birth of christ our lord and wishing you all the blessings of his love and i basically that's the entire set these four and i couldn't help myself i was just going to stamp this on the inside but this is so pretty every year i try to do a completely different card so now that I've done this one and used up like the entire stamp set, I'll have to I'll get a totally different die for next year. But the assembly is pretty simple in this case. Uh, lay it down, make it straight, glue it down. And I wanted to get a little shimmer to it too, uh, but I couldn't find any of the shimmers in the store except for the Wink of Stella that was at Hobby Lobby, and for the amount of cards I'm making, I would really go through quite a bit of Wink of Stella. 
So I guess between now and when these get sent out, I'll see if I can find another shimmer spray. I don't really want to order online because I only need one thing. And I'm so cheap, I don't want to pay the extra shipping for just one thing because I really only need just that bottle. Maybe I'll take a trip down the dick plick and see if they have anything. So that's that. And then what we do for the, the neighborhood evangelical team is these get packaged together with um, a daily bread and whatever the seasonal devotion that daily bread has. And then information about what's going on um, for the next couple months with the church. And also I have uh, this little guy right here. And I made ornaments uh, last year. And this is going to be my ornament. And basically it comes in a die that's this width. And there's two sides to it. You, you stamp I and mean, you die cut two and put it together. Um, and it's nice to have like a little tea light on the inside. And it'll make some really nice shadows on the wall. I don't know if you can see that shadow back there, but just imagine this as a, as a shadow shining with the tea lamp on the wall. It's really pretty. And so I actually have to cut 200 of these because it takes two to make this box. It'll fold flat and go right into the package. And that completes my package. Now for my friends, it's going to be a little different. Um, I have some friends who are religious and non-religious or my friends who are Jewish. And so uh, I will have a religious card for those who wish to have one. And then this is my seasonal card. And uh, for those who want a religious card, theme card, they will also get the, the die here, but I will put vellum because I'm sending out a much smaller amount. I'll take the time to put the vellum on the back of those and put the tea light inside maybe. And then for this, the seasonal cart, um, I'm going to do this one. And this one is, I want to say this is Stampin' Up 2 and it's Mountain View or Mountain Scene or uh, something like that. I'll try to remember to uh, type it under the, in the comments. And I have this lantern and that's going to be my ornament for uh, those cards, especially for Hanukkah. How cool would that be? I put a little glitter or, you know, a little shimmery, some sparkling around that. And that's going to be a pretty cute ornament. And I'll cut out, you know, several layers to give it a nice stiff backing for that one. That's going to be a cute little guy. And I just picked this up online. Okay, so here's the big thing. For my nieces and nephews, I decided this year I wanted to do an advent calendar. I've never done an advent calendar before in my life. And I went around to the different stores you know, looking to see if I could find one. And uh, those those girls and the little guys, the little guys are just little, but those poor girls are like destructo bots. So I don't want to spend $50 on an advent calendar they were going to destroy. And then two, I just like to make stuff. So I figured, hey, I could make my own. And uh, the one I found is a book. Basically, this is going to open up into a book and I haven't done the inside covers yet. I actually had to build the book. So I had to cut up a uh, heavy cardboard and build the book here. And I'm going to cover this. So probably the next studio blog you see, you're going to actually see the, the physical book put together. I'll have that put together. And then these boxes go in here. They'll sit inside, 12 on both sides. And the book will sit up like this between the two boxes and they'll be able to fold it open. And this is just enough space for me to get two treats for each of the girls, one for each of the girls inside these little boxes. So I am going to, this is two, I need to make 25 of these little boxes. Put a little tab on them too. So that they can get them open. I hope I didn't glue that one closed. You can see how difficult they are to get open without their little tab. So I have a little tab on them. And then number them 1 through 24. And they'll have a little scripture reading that goes with each of the boxes. A little treat inside. And then I'll put the 25th box in the middle. Put some candy canes in it or something like that. This size, like this, this will accommodate 
quite a bit of space so I, I can really put something big and nice in the middle of that box. I think it's really going to be a cute idea. I'll also put the link down in the description uh, to the original video where I saw this idea at. Now, there was a recent discussion in one of my groups about how many, you know, works in progress that everybody has. And so my joke was, you want me to count them? One of the ladies suggested that you should really only have one. And if it's not really flowing for you, then you should uh, frog it and uh, move on to something else. Ideally, having only one work in progress is an excellent idea because you just work through it and get it done. But in my case, there's several reasons why I have all these little different works in progress. Uh, first of all, I do more than one craft. So, uh, and I do them for different purposes. So I'm always trying to get a lot of things done. And there are some things that I can do quickly and they're small projects and some things take a lot of time. I don't want to get bored if I'm doing a craft that takes a lot of time. You know, if you're spinning for really big projects monotonously, you could find yourself bored. And what happens with boredom is you can find yourself not liking the project because you have nothing to break it up. Or you can find yourself making mistakes, uh, such as when I was knitting the, um, oh gosh, what is it called? the uh, calzone here's the calzone and this one is made from handmade mohair well which coincidentally i spun up like a pound of that stuff um when you're knitting something that the pattern is repetitive like there's 25 repeats of the same thing and the uh, calzone is repetitive with a capital r you can find that sometimes you can get into a zone, zone out, and think you've done this part of the pattern because it feels familiar to you all the time and realize that you have messed up somewhere or you're just repeating the motions over and over again and you've dropped the stitch. Sometimes you don't discover that until you have the whole thing done or you're so far past that. And in the case of like the calzone is so repetitive that I could put a stitch marker somewhere and still frog back and have no idea where I was um, in the pattern. And so, uh, you know, you can do things like lifelines and stuff like that, but unless you do a lifeline every row for something like this, at some point you're still gonna frog back to a spot where it's gonna be complicated. And so when I'm knitting something that's just super repetitive like this, you know what, after a while I just, stop if I feel like my eyes are getting tired or my hands are getting tired. And to me, that's a much better solution. And so I work on something else. Uh, my second reason, or maybe that's the third reason for switching up projects, uh, is that a lot of times I work uh, on something particular for a video or for an article or as commissioned to somebody else. And when I'm doing those three things, I also want to do something that is for myself. So I give a little time uh, and dedication to that project and then a little time for myself project. And the third reason or the fourth reason is to avoid repetitive stress injuries because I've been prone to tendonitis since I've begun spinning. And that's a problem because the tendonitis just doesn't affect the muscles I'm using when I'm spinning. It's the entire hand and wrist uh, down to the elbow. And it makes it impossible for me to do things like braid my hair or even turn doorknobs. So I do not want to um, get or have frequent bouts of tendonitis through repetitive stretch injuries, which reminds me, I will make a video on stretches that spinners and knitters and crocheters and basically anyone who does a lot of hand work should do. So um, I break up the knitting, spinning, weaving, whatever it is I'm doing with other activities like cart making, beading, gardening, um, whatever it is, just to make sure that I'm kind of an all around uh, type of individual. And also I have to say too, that if 
it's an item that I'm gifting, sending, selling. Uh, I have to sometimes make other components to go with it. So if I'm sending out something, there might be matching stitch markers or there might be a matching paper craft or something like that to that effect that goes out with it. So I'm also switching gears in order to make a total package that goes with that particular craft. Okay, so that brings me to this guy. So let me pull off the um, calzone so I can show you what's underneath it. Now, in this summer, I collected rolls of relatively cheap fabric just so I could make a couple muumuu dresses to walk around in so I could run out back and forth and uh, see the dogs get the mail, all that kind of stuff in the summer heat. And I only made two. I never got around to making the other one. So I have all these rolls of fabric up there. And it occurred to me that I wanted to make myself kind of a drapey cape shawl. I saw one at Hobby Lobby. It was so cheap and acrylic and uh but it was a triangle woven and I don't have a triangle loom I've always wanted to uh someday when I have more space but I didn't want to get that one um though it wasn't all that bad at any rate uh, and I have I just knitted the calzone for my mom and I, I have all that Jacob fin that's supposed to go to weaving but in the meantime um since I have another project that needs to be done before the new year. I'm not going to have time to put this Jacob on the loom right now. So I decided I would just go ahead and drape a shawl from the fabric that I have. And this is what I'm working on right now. And I'm hoping to get this all straightened out. I'm going to give it a try today on and see whether or not I would really want to make armholes or how it falls. And I think I'm going to add some beads and things down there. So when I get that together, uh, you'll see that sometime soon. Last thing I want to show you is the uh, turban that I'm knitting up. Um, it's the Burnett. And I actually did a... Um, what is it called? Pattern of uh, pattern spotlight. That's what it was. I did a pattern spotlight on this last year, and I'm just feeling the need to make another one again. Working on that should have that finished by the end of the week. And I actually started a new eight godmothers, which I did for the video on time and pricing. And what I was trying to do is I I really like the eight godmothers, but it is really small. And I wanted to see if I could increase the size of the collar. So I added an extra five stitches to the top. And I just kind of ignore those five stitches when I'm stitching. And I kind of sort of ran out of yarn. So I need to spin up another batch of that. Let's see how many I got done. One, two, three, four, five. So I made it more than halfway through. So I need to go ahead and spin up a little bit more of that fiber and get that finished so that I can uh, check out, see how that goes. I'm wishing now that I had done it, that I had gone up an extra 10 and that really, really brought the collar high up on the neck. And it probably would have given me a feel of like those Victorian collar knits I see. And I'm thinking I wanna, I might add some curly stuff around here. And I got a package in the mail. Package came in the mail the other day, and I was trying to figure out what it was because I hadn't ordered anything. And it turns out it said it was from Lake Erie Spinners, and it's Lincoln Long Wool. It came uh, from the Spin Together, uh, which I participated in last month and had a really good time. And so I've got some really nice curly guys to play with here. And I'm going to do something useful with these pretty locks. Turn them into something. And you know what? I've spun Lincoln before, but I've never done a breed study on it. So maybe that'll be my next breed study. The Lincoln long wool. You know how much I love long wools. So it's going to be fantastic. Okay. Thank you everybody for watching the studio vlog. Uh, as time goes on, I'm hoping to make these videos a little more exciting. And hopefully... Um, I'll be able to complete the projects that you see in the video in a timely manner so that they look like they're in sequence uh, in the videos. It seems like whenever I 
you know, I have something to do, I find something else to do. So we'll figure that out. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer um, things I can do to, to make improvements, things that you would like to see me do, things you would like to know. If you're a subscriber, I really appreciate, appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the little bell for notifications. And if you like the video, please press like. That helps YouTube share my video with others. And it's very encouraging because I'm not making any money off these videos. I'm just sharing them because I like sharing what I do. And it's so encouraging when my uh, videos are shared and basically I have more views. And, you know, it gives me a really good sense of community out there. I know you're out there and thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.